Hey everyone, welcome to the Fireside Chat number 30 on Crushing Classical, redefining a thriving classical music career. I'm Tracy Friedlander, and today we unpack the concept of knowing versus feeling. This week had this theme, as Eileen and I are finding often happens during our challenges, and through the themes we manage to learn new things about ourselves. I had a situation this week in which I had to make a hard decision, and what I knew didn't necessarily match with some of the feelings that I had, which made it hard. That is where we dive in and distinguish what to do when you are in this sort of predicament. As you listen today, you are bound to think of times in your life where you knew something, and you can look at what you did about it. Did you operate out of what you knew you had to do, or how you felt about what was happening? Before we start, a couple of quick things. Please join the conversation at facebook.com slash crushing classical as well as crushing classical on Instagram. If you love our content, it would mean the world to us for you to comment and share it with your classical musician friends and colleagues. Let's get started. Hey, Eileen, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. So um, today, uh, well, this week we've had quite the week, both of us have, Ooh. and we were on, the, <laughs> I love when we have firesides where we've had like really stressful weeks. Yeah, this has not been a good week. <laughs> no. <laughs> Usually we have stressful weeks at the beginnings of our challenges. I wonder if they're yeah. proportionate to how long, because that one really stressful one was like on day 30 something and it was a hundred day challenge. And this is like the second week of a, of a, 30 day challenge. So well, it's sort of like a, well, so here's what's interesting about that. So do you remember that day 12 of the hundred day challenge, we started to make some very big decisions. Yes. Like we were really confronting something at that time. Oh, do yeah. you remember that? Well, yes. here we are and we're about day 12 now. Are we not? Yes. Is this not day 12? I think it is, right? It is day Ish? 12. Yes. It's day 12. Okay. So do you think this is weird? Yeah, what, what is that? Does that mean like that? 12 days in always days is? In. Yeah, there's like a, there seems to be like a, you know, come to Jesus thing <laughs> that happens at day 12. <laughs> I I have no idea why that is, though. I, I think it's interesting that it's happened twice now. Yeah, it is. Like it's it's come to a peak or a pinnacle, like a moment of decision or something like that. Something about that. Yeah, I think it's interesting. So, you know, for those of you who are thinking about doing challenges, um, you know, not not that it's necessarily going to go that way for you, but look and see what happens if it's if it's around day 10 to 12 or, you know, 15 or whatever like that. See what it's like. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So um, so this week was particularly stressful for me because we actually decided to make a pretty big decision about our daughter's school that we decided to change her to a different one. And, Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think actually from doing these kinds of challenges, it's helping me to think differently, actually. Um, I feel like, um, I'm able to just, let's see, how can I put this into words? Like look at the facts and look at the reality of things and then, um, choose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Without, without, and I'm not saying that it's not hard. And like what I struggled with this week was feelings. And yeah. this is what I wanted to talk about this, um, on this fireside was that like, I know that I had a gut feeling that I had to choose something different, but then I, and then my husband and I were both struggling about how we felt about it. Like the emotional side of saying bye to friends and teachers and Oh, and and even going to the point of, did we really choose the wrong school in the first place? And, oh my God, you know, maybe we didn't even look hard enough. And then making all these, you know, making ourselves feel bad for all these things from the past Mm -hmm. and then just getting more and more rooted in the feeling thing. But, um, and then going, no, what do I actually know needs to happen for the sake of my daughter's education? That's yeah. the bottom line, you know, yep. and um, and I realized that I had to decide this from a knowing from like a gut feeling. And so every time that I would slip into the feelings thing, which is definitely my tendency all my life of being mm-hmm. like being paying attention to my emotions and feeling like I had to think through all all my feelings and figure them out and think them through until I felt better. Like that's really always where I was coming from. And I, I know that you've you've said to me a lot of times that feelings are terrible 
judge of of what's happening you know yeah i always say yeah i always say feelings are a terrible barometer Mm -hmm. yeah you can't really measure anything with feelings right and and i can tell just from this experience that it's so true like i feel bad about leaving but that's not the reason to stay you know which is all the stuff that's going on um i just Mm -hmm. know that it's the right thing to leave and so um so at one point a few points actually i decided to to play this little trick on my brain which i'd done I, 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 I've done this for a long time and I don't know where I thought of it, but I just came up with it that I decide to imagine that I actually decided to not ch- change schools. Like just the thing I'm conflicted about, um, to imagine that I decided to stay instead mm-hmm. and see if I feel better, see what feelings I get. Like imagine, imagine what that's like. If I said, you know what? Never mind. Let's just stay where we are. Let's, um, let's just rough it out. Let's see what happens. Like, I just imagine like I'm saying all these things and that's what I've chosen and see how my body feels and see where it feels like in my, in my gut essentially. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, it was like, no, it was like, Mm -hmm. it was like a repelling, like a terrible feeling. Like I was like, no, 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 this is not right. This is not right. Mm -hmm. So that helped me a lot. Just, just looking at just relying on my body. I don't know. Remember when your brother was on the fireside um, a long yeah. time ago and he, he was yeah. talking about this and he said that he goes with how a feeling that he has in his body. Yeah. He's really good at that. Um, and, and I can say there was a time that he didn't do that. He definitely thought through everything. I think he's, I think he's a, a little bit of both, but yeah, he's definitely done that. And I think, I do think that, uh, um, you know, getting, I guess you could say sitting with yourself and it's, you know, experiencing it. Yeah. Is a really good idea. Um, and I will say this too, in order to do that, you have to be completely sober. Oh yeah. I think what a lot of people do is they do a medicate, like a self medication thing, you know, mm-hmm. Oh, I'll go have a drink tonight and think about it. Or Oh, I'll pop, you know, a Xanax and think about it. Because, I mean, we, we just live in a world now where people are, you know, they're using drugs. Like, that. that's a normal thing for people to have a prescription. Mm-hmm. For pain Definitely. or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, you know, so it's normal. Or, or, you know, obviously drinking. Or, you know, drinking a monster energy, which is a lot of caffeine, right? So that's also, I mean, if you're going to... Oh, let me tell you, last night I wanted to have a nice big glass of wine. I'll bet you did. Um, and I, and I also, I mean, I admit I had a little, you know me though, I can't handle much and I don't want to have a headache the next day. So I literally had like probably one ounce of yeah, little Tracy rosé. Can Tracy cannot handle a lot of I wine. can't handle it. And I'm a no, I'm a no to having a headache and being hung over nowadays because I want to function. I mean, I'm, a, I'm guilty as charged with caffeine right now. We can talk about that later, but, um, yeah, but with I the, mean, you know, everybody uses something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everybody uses something, but I'm just saying. And I we mean, got we got our favorite bar food last night, Rally Times. We got it because oh, I was that's like, great. yeah, yeah, because awesome. I was like, look, we deserve a little treat <laughs> for this hard week that we've had. Yeah, gotta, yeah, I mean, it was not a good week. You know? Um, I, I yeah. agree with you. And so, yeah, no, but I think, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to figure out what you know, which is really what you were trying to figure out this week, you yeah. really just, I think the hardest thing to do sometimes is just sit quietly and just look, just look. Mm-hmm. You have to sit long enough and you have to sit quietly with no distractions and you just have to, um, and I, and I do think you have to feel and you have to look. Yeah. What do, what do you know in your body? What do you know? Right. Because you do actually know. Right. And you know, I, I was thinking about it, you know, and I told my daughter this, it's hard to explain to a seven year old when stuff is happening in the grown up world that won't yeah. make sense to the kids. But you yeah, have like to. Doesn't, it doesn't make sense to her why she needs to move schools. No, it doesn't at all. It's a grown-up decision that got made here, mm-hmm. and the kids like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, what? Are, why is this happening so fast? What? I'm going to a different school next week. What? You yeah, know? Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, she doesn't understand, and she she couldn't yeah. possibly understand why you're doing it. You have reasons, you know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um. And so, but I was thinking about like um. The other times that I've 
felt like this. I've transferred schools twice in my college career. Yep. I transferred once in undergrad and once in grad school. And yep. both times I did that, there were feelings involved and there were people involved that I felt bad about telling. And I didn't always do it the right way either. I admit like, um, you know, as far as telling people, telling teachers, things like that, um, I was much more immature about it. Um, oh man. I mean, you know, come over here and sit next to me. I got to tell you, I transferred schools, um, twice and then I ended up, uh, leaving the second, the third school. And then later I took a break and then I went back to school and it was to a different school. So I actually ended up going to four. Is that right? One, two, three. <laughs> is that right? One, two. Oh no, I ended up going to three, excuse me. I ended mm. up going to three schools. And so, so I, I transferred once and then I dropped out for a while and then I went back to a different school. And I can tell you, this is, I'm really glad you brought this up because honestly, I didn't make any of those decisions from what I knew. Mm, they, really? They were purely, no, they were purely feelings, pure feelings and avoidance. Really? 100%. Yep. Okay. You know what Cause I was avoiding? what were you avoiding? You know, it's really funny. I mean, I haven't talked to anybody about this in so long. I can't believe we're talking about this. You know what I was avoiding? I was avoiding saying, I don't want to be in school. I was avoiding saying, I want to drop out of school and pursue a career by practicing and taking lessons on my own and working, like having a job, working, mm -hmm. getting work and getting paid. I, I'll tell you what, um, a big priority for me was supporting myself. I really wanted to support myself. I, I, that, that started when I was younger. That started when I was around 12. I decided wow. that I needed to be on my own and that I wanted to pay for my own things. I wanted to earn my own money. I just really badly, badly, badly wanted to be independent. Mm -hmm. And so, and that was all the way through my college career. And so I felt like college was in the way of that. All I wanted to do was work, earn money, take care of myself and practice and perform. And like, really, that's what I wanted to do. I was avoiding saying that. Right. And I avoided it by getting myself into further into um, school debt. Right. Right. I'm so proud. <laughs> cool. Well, um, both times I transferred, I have to say that I feel like I was coming from a knowing, like I knew that I needed to be with a different teacher. That was the thing yeah. that I, that I left for. Totally. And, and the feelings were, you know, I feel bad about telling the teacher. I feel scared about telling the teacher when I, when you I changed studios. Out of U of I. You started out at U of I, right? University of Illinois? Right. That's right. Okay. And did you know when you were in that studio that you needed a different teacher? You know what? I almost um, felt like I knew almost from right from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Um, I knew that during my lessons, he was, I mean, during my lessons, he wasn't even listening to me. He was like working on something at his desk with his back to me while I was playing etudes. So lessons didn't even feel interactive most of the time. Interesting. And yeah. And I was just like, and he would just say to me, you are the most advanced freshman here. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, well, thanks. What do I get? A prize? You know, like, I don't care right. if I'm the most well, advanced you? freshman. Yeah, no, yeah. I get it. Well, and exactly. here's the thing too. I mean, and here's what, here's what's so interesting about what you know, is that probably what was happening at that time, if you really look and everybody, you know, who's listening to this, you have to map this onto yourself. Okay. Because this is not about Eileen and Tracy. This is about you looking in your life about what we're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. Probably what happened was you were sitting there and in the way, 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 way back of your mind, you were like, what am I doing here? This is a mistake. Right. I shouldn't be here. This was, you know what I mean? You know, like the deep, yep. dark part that you never let yourself think or what, you know what I mean? Yeah, a hundred percent. And actually, you know, I was so young when I was, I mean, thinking back to when I was like, what, 18, 17 or 18, when I was looking at schools and my parents were nervous that I'm the oldest child going to school and they wanted me to stay in state. They were concerned about tuition costs and they didn't want me to spend a lot of money. And also we didn't have a lot of money to go on a tour to look for schools. So I felt really limited um, 
from the get go trying to find a teacher. And yep. then I was I was not going with what I knew with that because mm -hmm. I think that there were other better teachers in other un Illinois schools that mm -hmm. I ignored for um because oh that school doesn't sound as good as U of I like Western Illinois University that doesn't sound as fancy or as prestigious as University of Illinois like I sure. remember because I remember really liking the teacher at Western Oh really yeah and actually yeah. I I visited Western once and it's not a campus I'd want to live on, but, and it's not an area of Illinois I'd want to live in. Right. But, but, you know. I don't even remember where lot, it is. I don't remember either. Like I've only <laughs> been there one time and I just remember going, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I probably wonder, what I, I felt, know. you know, a little bit. I was like, I'm tired of living in, in the middle of nowhere with my parents. And it still felt like the middle of nowhere, except not with my parents, yeah. but the teacher, <laughs> Totally. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's totally what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like the teacher was great and I had a really good lesson. So, but you know, that in that case, it's like a, it's like a big picture thing. You know, you're going with what a, the whole experience, but in that case, the teacher was better and I didn't go with it. And then, and then I looked at, um, U of I and I think I only looked at those two schools, actually. I think my parents wanted me to try out North, Northern Illinois, but that was only 30 minutes from my house. And I'm like, I'm not going this close to home. Oh, like, I didn't I really... realize it was that close. Oh, yeah. DeKalb is really close to my parents, where my parents lived, or where I mean, okay. where I grew up. Like, and yeah, so, no. yeah, I'm like, that's too close. I can go home that's on the weekends. Close. No. <laughs> but um, so so then I, I, did, I knew that I needed to get out of there. Like, I knew. Yeah. And um I don't even remember how I navigated telling the teacher. I just I was just gone. And yeah, then in you know, and it's it's always that feeling, that feelings thing, you know, once you know something, the hardest thing is the what you're going to have to communicate yes. after you know something. I think that's Totally. Because uh, you know, it always feels like a broken promise. Yes. You know, that's what I mean? exactly that's what, what it, it feels is. like. Yeah. That's exactly like what it feels promise. like. Yeah. But then but then like in the case of the school, that's exactly how I feel. But in the case of the school, I feel like other other unwritten promises were broken to me about the way things were going to be going there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, yep. Because an yep. unwritten promise would be that this is a stable environment. You know, and yep. I didn't feel that it was anymore. So yep. so there's like that way, that thing. But but like um, and, and, and I agree with you, like you feel like when you when you go to a school, when you sign on for a college and mm -hmm. you say, I want to study with this person, you it's like a promise that you're going to study it's with that person for four years or two That's years right. if it's I a master's degree. Stay and graduate. Right. Yeah. And so when I left a studio at Indiana, I also felt like that, like, geez, you know, I promised I would study with him. And and the original agreement was that this was going to be great. And now it doesn't yeah. feel good anymore. Yeah. And I know that it's not good for me, you know? Yeah. And it, it wasn't even just how it felt. It was, there was a reality to mm -hmm. your life there. Yeah. Yeah. You the know, reality of that, this isn't healthy for me to stay with yeah, this, this teacher. Working. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 Totally. So it's um, just the, it's just the battle of feelings versus knowing because yep. you know that, and, and I know that I'm sure there's an example I could come up with where I went with the feelings instead of the knowing and probably suffered longer than I needed to for something. Well, I'll tell you what. So um, let's talk through, you know, how do you, how do you um, navigate it and move through it? Yes. Because I think, I think what a lot of people do is they know something, you know, you're, you're kind of an exception this week because you knew something and it was super uncomfortable for you and you moved through it and here we are and you're, it's complete basically. Yeah, I know. Complete. And I, I can't, in, in some ways I can't believe I moved that fast, but you did, it, you, you moved faster than you normally would have. Like this is yeah. lightning speed for you. Right. But when I it was, was really in, surprised actually. Yeah. I, I was surprising myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I yeah. think, um, it was because it's a situation involving my daughter and I didn't want it to drag out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I see that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if you know something, you know, and, and this is, I, I think a lot of people find themselves in this situation. They know that there's some move they need to make some decision they need to make some something. Mm -hmm. And you know, that you need to do it. And, and all the, then all the feelings come up. I'm going to let somebody down. I'm going to break a promise. I'm going to exactly. do some of that. Right. 
all that's immediately what comes up. Because if you're a good intentioned person, of course you feel terrible. Yeah. Of course you feel terrible. And mm-hmm. so um the first thing is I think, you know, your idea, I love your idea. I've never tried that before, but I'm going to. I love your idea of okay, put yourself in the situation where you made the other decision. So you know there's a decision you need to make, but let's say you made the opposite decision. Let's say you decide to stay in mm-hmm. whatever scenario you're cuz usually it's let's be honest, most decisions are you're trying to leave something. You're yeah, a breakup, a, rela- a relationship a breakup with or, somebody. Yeah, you're trying to yeah, you're trying yeah. to change something. Mm-hmm. You're trying to separate from something. Right. You know. So um, you know, I love your idea of putting yourself in the situation where let's say you just didn't and you just stayed there. Mhm. And then, you know, sit with that and how is that for you? Yeah. You know, like feel that. Uh, I'm going to be in this for another six weeks, eight weeks, two years, five years, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Right. Are you good with that? Right. And, And I think that's your answer. Totally. Because if it, if it makes you feel relieved, like, oh, good. All those community, like, like staying is actually, um, better than considering the move and all the communications that you have to do. Mm hmm then you yep. then that's that's a good answer but like yeah those communications are hard but if that's not worse wait what am i trying to say if that's not if that's not easier than staying like if staying mm-hmm. is way worse than just those communications then then well, you, know, and, and, you know yeah and you know here's the other thing i'll say is that when you do your breakup you you know it's funny you texted me this morning and told me how you did it how mm-hmm. you did your communication yeah and i think i think you did exactly the right thing and i'll tell you why um so when you're, when you are going to do the communication to leave or separate or disconnect or whatever it is you're going to do, you know, the best thing you can do is acknowledge all of the really great things. Mm-hmm. Acknowledge the great things. There is a reason you're leaving and make the reason about you, not them. Mm-hmm. Even if it's about them. Right. Right. Because the one thing that you want to do, this is what I've, I've really learned this. Like I wouldn't have told you this 10 years ago, but I'll tell you this now. The one thing you want to do is leave people better than you found them. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing you can do is leave people better than you found them. Right. Um, you know, tell, uh, share with them what you appreciate about them, share with them what you liked about it, Sh- you know, all the good things that mm-hmm. you liked. Um, and I know in your case, uh, you know, you communicated, but you made it about you. We're leaving for our reasons. And, you know, yeah, you know, you made it about you. You didn't make it about what didn't work about the school for you. Right. And, and because that never actually produces anything really. Exactly. And, and they didn't even ask for feedback. I think that's the other point is that a lot of times when you want to give feedback, I mean, I, I get the desire to give feedback, but most of the time people don't want to hear it and they didn't ask for it. And I don't even think, I don't even think it's wise. You know, if they ask for feedback, that's fine. If they, if you write the letter or you call the person and, and then they say, well, we would like some feedback from you about why you're leaving or why you're separating or why you're disconnecting. You know, like when you left schools, uh, you know, if I was the school, I would have done an exit interview with, with you. I know. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, that would be really interesting if they did that. Tell us why you're leaving. That's what I would do at the at the school too. I would say, I'm really sad you're leaving. I'm really disappointed. Would you share with us? Give us feedback so we can do better for for everyone else because you left. Mm -hmm. You know, like we didn't. There was something we lacked that you needed. So what is that? So we can do better. That would be a better approach, right? So that, that's what I would say first is when you, how you're going to get rid of those yuck feelings, in my opinion, is you're going to take the high road. Mm-hmm. You're going to be great with people. That's really what you have to do. You have to yeah. be great with people. And if you do that, you can change the entire dynamic of the situation. Right. You know, and make it about you because you're leaving for your reasons. I mean, that's the truth. You had some experience there, but you're leaving for your reasons and for nothing else. That's actually exactly. true. That's you actually know? true. I know everything that I wrote was true. Yes. About why we wanted to find a different That's place. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. And actually, you know, um, the, the only, and so the only thing that you could add to what you did was, um, you know, just give them some acknowledgement. 
Yeah. That's, it. that's all. Yeah. The, that's the only, that's the only other thing I could possibly suggest for what happened this week for you. And, and by the way, I say this on the tale of having just received an email from somebody who decided to um, disconnect from me, somebody who I've known for a few years and they disconnected from me. But the worst part about the disconnection actually was that um, they didn't acknowledge anything good mm -hmm. that came from the relationship we had. And right. in fact, they made it about me. Exactly. They made it about me. And, and really, look, I may have said done or like, I don't even, I don't even know because it was so vague, like the communication was so vague, but mm -hmm. what that person doesn't get is that what there was to do was to acknowledge and be great about it and own that they're leaving for their reasons. Mm -hmm. That's what there was to do. And they didn't do that. Right. You know? Um, and, and I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just realizing now what actually didn't work for me. That's, that was the hard part of my week, by the way, Tracy had a, you know, her week with the school. This, this was my part of the week and it happened at the tail end of this week, um, was this email that I got and it was very surprising. And, and this is going to happen to you at some point in your life. Like people are going to communicate with you or decide to, you know, they're not going to work with you anymore. Or they're not going to talk to you anymore or whatever. Like this is going to happen if it hasn't happened to you already, it's going right. to happen. And, and this isn't the first time this has happened to me, but of course I'm 43 years old. So of course it isn't. Right. And you've had a lot of business relationships with people. So I'm sure you've gotten those business ones too. Totally. And I, and I've had it with other people. Like I've done it to other people. I've, um, you know, broken up, if you will, with other people. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's a two way street. This is not right. a, a And some of your breakups with business, um, with clients, mm -hmm. um, a lot of time, I'm, I can think of one where you did, you did that, but you remained friends and other ones where you did that and weren't able to stay close, but mm -hmm. you could still be uh, in contact, like that's right. superficially, like on Facebook or something. Exactly. Yeah. That's definitely happened. Like it really depends on the relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that's the hard part about it is every, every time, if you think about it, whenever, um, you're trying to leave something or you've, you know, you know that there's some move you need to make, it always has to do with relationships actually. Totally. Oh my gosh. So true. Doesn't it? It always does. It's always about the relationships that you built while you were there. Because if you think about it, the relationships are the foundation of any scenario you're in. Mm -hmm. You know, like at the school, there's the teachers and there's the director and there's the kids and the parents. That's what made this um, decision hard because there were so many great relationships in there. Mm -hmm. But one of the key ones was the one that was the problem for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so it was hard totally. because it wasn't like I was like, oh, there's so many relationships I need to get away from over there. It wasn't like that either. Actually, but, there were only a, maybe only, a, you know, like a couple. Right. You know, and so, yeah, so that's that's the hard part. And I, I think it's really, you know, the bad feelings, the feelings that you're talking about. That's yeah. that's what we feel about. We feel about the human beings involved. It's hard. Yeah, that's why it's hard. If you were just leaving an institution and there were no... <laughs> You know, yep. it's sort of like when you decide to quit a bank, you don't feel bad. No, no. I you mean, know? maybe you feel badly because you're not going to see your personal banker anymore if you had a relationship right. with one. Exactly. But that's really it. And so, yeah, no, I, I totally get it. And um, yeah, I mean, I think I think that's the hardest part about it. And so mm -hmm. I think that the key to it is uh, if you know that there's a decision you need to make, the best thing you can do. And really, I, I really do think this is this helps with the whole feelings part of it because feelings are very real. Um, they're not a good barometer, but they are they occur as very real. I can tell you when I've made a choice based on feelings and totally not knowing. I just thought of some examples. OK, yeah, I want to hear actually. Yeah. breakups. Because, oh, yeah, because I can think of two. I can think of almost all my breakups, actually. Um, were they all, were they all knowing the breakups that happened that I'm thinking of right now, I was broken up with. And okay. then when I had the opportunity to get back together because feelings, because I'm yeah. sad, because I'm depressed, I took it mm -hmm. and I got yeah. back together and I strung, I strung out those, um, situations for a lot longer than I should have. 
because yeah. I wasn't paying attention to knowing at all. In fact, there was one time where I actually said, I know I shouldn't do this, but I'm doing it anyway because I feel better. And I, and it was, it was not a smart idea at all. Like mm -hmm. at all. I, and I yeah. did, I went and I told my friend that before I went and did the thing. I mean, it was like I was broken up with this person and he said, hey, you want to do this um, trip with me? You want to do this, that, the other? And I was like, yes, I do want to. This is great. And mm -hmm. I got off the phone with him and I'm like, I know I shouldn't do this. I know I'm fucking mm -hmm. myself over. This yep. is a, this is just fucking myself. And, and I was like, know. yeah, this I was is, like, I'm very... fucking myself up and I don't care. And I went, <laughs> this is how destructive I was at that time was in my it life. Bad? What did it turn out badly? Um. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It turned out yep. the person already had another girlfriend. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So he was just playing me and her. Yeah. And she probably wasn't available for the trip, so you got invited. <laughs> yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, well, and I, I knew... You know, I'm just guessing. I could And be listen how destructive this. I was at that time. I said yes, and then I went to the bar that I worked at, and I went and had a drink like immediately after I had like decided that I was doing this thing. And I told my friends, "I'm like, I need a drink. This is what I'm doing. Can you believe how stupid this is? Give me a gin and tonic." <laughs> yeah, because like, the first thing you want to do is sedate. You're like, "Yeah, I don't want to realize what I just did, so I think I'll yeah. just shoot myself up with some chemicals." <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, some, uh, "I think I'll have some ethanol tonight." <laughs> <laughs> you know? And yeah, and then after that, I went and met him at a party. Like, oh my god, so self-destructive emotionally. Only I because I wanted to do that. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people do that in relationships. By the way, I think that's the yeah. most common place where knowing gets shot down because feelings. Uh huh. Oh yeah, for I think sure. that's the most common place that happens. Because the I mean, easiest yeah, way to feel career. better, the, the way yeah. to, to feel better immediately is to get back with that person who you're missing because you're missing mm -hmm. them. Yep. So you, you, you look at that as a way to like smooth it over, but the knowing I was unable to tap into knowing it each time because I was so emotionally distraught over these situations. That's one example. I know I've done it a few times because if I hadn't done it, I would not have gotten back together. And I think it's well, a, it, and, you yeah, know. and you did it. You also did it. Um, you know, like, so I'm curious, can we do a walk down memory lane of Tracy's freelancing career? Actually, no. Uh, maybe it's the audition track. Maybe it's the audition track that we should. So like when you think about all the auditions oh, right. you took. Yes. So were there any auditions where you knew this was a bad idea or you shouldn't go? Yeah. A lot of them. Oh, my gosh. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, especially when I was taking a principal horn audition and I knew that I I knew that high horn. I didn't think through like I what I knew that. um you know, probably a high horn job wasn't right for me if I was struggling yeah. on high horn. But instead, I was like, I need to think. I thought this is my thinking process. I need to not limit myself and all the jobs that I could have because there's only a certain amount of jobs that come out every year. So um, if a high horn and a low horn audition comes out, I should take both because that increases my chances of getting a job. I see. Okay. So I was yeah. like, oh, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's so stupid because I knew that, I mean, I could play high. Like it was a thing I could do, but it wasn't something that I felt like it wasn't the same as Lowhorn where I was like, I can do this any day of the week. I can play anything. I can do it all day. You know, mm -hmm. some people feel like that about high horn and some feel like that about low horn. And I don't sure. know too many people who feel that way about the whole horn. People that do are rock stars. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know, I mean, they it, can, yeah, they can play both ranges really well. Yeah, and I think a lot of people can play both ranges really well, and I feel like I can now in my career. But like, low horn is something that I don't have to maintain as hardcore as high horn. Like, if I wanted to play a high horn job right now, I would be like, "Okay, Eileen, I'll talk to you in another lifetime," because I'm going to have to be practicing like certain spaced out times a day. I'm going to have to be like make, maintaining my food properly and sleep and not stressing myself out. And, you know, it would have to be like a full life, lifetime maintenance. It would have, have to be full on preparation to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it would. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I know players who, who just naturally, they, you know, they practice all the time and they have to maintain their chops, obviously, but high horn just comes more naturally. And if they have to play something in the low range, like a solo, that's going to stand out. They're going to have to make sure they're really got their low chops going. 
Whereas I would, yeah. I would just, my low chops are always going kind of thing. I see. So I know that's kind I of a long winded explanation for something well, technical, I mean, you know, but it makes sense. It makes sense though. And but so, I knew this about myself yet. I still took high horn auditions. That's, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. And that's what, that's what, you know, anyone listening right now, you got to look for yourself at what do you know? Um, and is what you're doing something, you know, you should be doing or not, you know, and if mm-hmm. you, if you don't know, then put down the, um, fear, put down <laughs> the wine, uh-huh. you know, put down the, whatever you're sedating yourself with and sit down and look. And you know, like auditions aren't easy, right? So I don't know why I came up with the solution that taking more auditions was better, considering that an audition is a tough thing physically and emotionally, and you you have to travel and you have to spend money. So financially, it's tough too. Um, to think to think that I should take everything that I could possibly just to increase my chances of winning a job that doesn't make sense. Because what if I focused and really worked on getting you know increasing my chances on actually winning instead of increasing that's my I, that's what I would have done to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I like that strategy that you're talking now. That's yeah. what I personally would have done. I would have said. Um, I'm going to wait until the ultimate job comes, but in the meantime, I am going to prepare for it like it's happening tomorrow. Exactly. Which I wasn't that. Yeah. But like I said, I was not in land of knowing. I was in land of feeling. And I get the- it. I, I was the same way as a player mm-hmm. uh, in school, certainly. Um, you know, because if I had, if I had gone with what I knew, I wouldn't, I don't even know if I would have gone to college. Mm. True story. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, what that what that could have looked a whole lot of ways. You could have been on the road. You could have traveled around and taken lessons with every clarinet player. You could have gone to Europe. You could have studied with soloists yeah. over there. All kinds um, of things I could have done. All yeah. kinds of things. And I didn't yeah. see that at the time. And, uh, you know, so, and I, you know what it was too, is I felt like I would be disappointing. You know, I went to a college prep school. Mm-hmm. You know, like a, a school that everyone goes to college. And, you know, I say that because not everybody grows up going just to a school where everyone's going to college. Like, that's just an assumption. Well, yeah. that that's the kind of school I grew up in. So, mm-hmm. and it was a wealthy area. And so, and, and it was just assumed everyone is going to college. There's no, right. nobody's, n- nobody's not going to college. It's not happening. And I so, mean, your high school is like the hot, the best high school in the whole state of Illinois, I think. Yeah, it is. And I don't even, I don't know if it still is, but I know it's always in the top five every Mm -hmm. year. And so, and I think it was, uh, I don't know, it might've slipped to number two, maybe I would have to look, but, Uh um, it's always in the top five. Actually, I think it's always in the top three. Wow. Mine's always in in the the bottom three. (laughs) Are you serious? No, I never looked. Oh, okay. You never looked, but I I only know because (laughs) it gets published all the time about the school. And so... But seriously, that's the kind of school it is. You don't go to that school. Everyone's going to college. You go to that school. Everyone's going to college. And so there was that assumption combined with my parents spent an inordinate amount of money to get me the best possible education. I went to Interlochen for school, uh, for, uh, you know, a year of school. I, you know, I studied with the best teachers from the time I was nine years old. I'm talking the best, like Chicago Symphony, the best. Like mm-hmm. I was studying with somebody in the Chicago Symphony when I was nine. Nine. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy. Ridiculous, right. So yeah. you know how much they were spending on lessons at that time. Yeah. 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 And so it wasn't a hundred dollars, but you didn't, that's not how much it cost back then. So, right. Like, right. you know, it's the equivalent of what $150 a, an hour would be today. Mm-hmm. Whatever that was. And so my parents were paid for that stuff all the time and they paid for music and the best horns, you know, the best, uh, you know, everything, the best of everything. And so I felt like I would be disappointing them felt here we go with feelings. I felt mm-hmm. that I would be disappointing them if I didn't get a degree in music right. at the very least. Right. Mm-hmm. Instead of knowing that that was not the right path for me. Right. And you know, yeah. I mean, what if you would have taken your own path and mm-hmm. I'm sure that they would see you thriving and that would have been something better eventually. Maybe the, maybe I, the initial conversation would have been uncomfortable, but I promise you I would have done better. I promise you that 
things would have turned out very differently if I had just done what I knew. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing I wish for everybody now, if you're growing up, especially if you're, you know, 16, 17, 18, undergraduate, start with what you know and go with what you know. If mm -hmm. there's one thing I think education tends to beat out of us, it's what we know. Right. And we, I, I really want us to move. I really, really, I truly wish for a world that moves, moves towards acting on what we know instead of acting on always how we feel or what everybody expects. Or, and I'm not saying this is an easy thing to do. Right. It's not. But I would love, I mean, that's the world I want to live in. A world where we all just do what we know. And we leave the situation, uh, you know, we break our promises with grace and acknowledgement. I love the idea of acknowledging. You know, I did that for the school. Um, I told them what I did love about the school. And I think I never did that when I um, did it before, when I left schools for myself, you know, when I transferred yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. um, that would have been a good move to do. Because then they feel yeah. acknowledged, and that's important to do. I mean, there's a reason why you chose it in the first place. Totally. That's that's a really good point. And that's true of relationships, too, by the mm. way. Oh, yeah. Nobody really thinks about that. There's a reason you chose that person initially. And so it's funny how we leave relationships, and we hate the person. You know, like that happens, right? You go, I hate them. You know, I don't want anything to do with it. You know, whatever. But yeah what you forgot is that there was a reason why you were there in the first place. And it could, you know, even though you have your reasons for leaving the things that were already there that were good are still there. Right. And consider that you're actually like, what are you saying about yourself when you say, Oh my gosh, you know, like when I started to go down that road of, Oh, we should have, maybe this wasn't the right school for us from the beginning. No, you know, it was the right school for us at the time. And mm -hmm. just like that person that you were with was the right person for you at the time for a variety of reasons. And you're also acknowledging yourself that you're not, um, you know, that you're, that you chose a great person you chose a great school initially for yourself and now yeah. it's not the case. So you're moving on. So it's like, I, there's a component of feeling bad, like making yourself feel bad about this stuff that, yeah. that maybe we can choose to leave out of it, you know? Yeah. I, I, Completely am guilty of making myself feel badly about things and mm, feel too. a lot of guilt, a lot yeah. of, um, you know, what did I do wrong? Um, all that human stuff. It's, there. oh my gosh, the guilt for me, big time. Yeah. The guilt is hard. The guilt is mm -hmm. hard, you know, and always looking really hard at what did I do? You know, what, what could I have done better here? I'm always looking at that. How could I improve? Um, you know, major disappointment always in myself whenever something, like that happens. Yeah. Um, always major, just incredible disappointment. And I felt that way when I was playing as well, when I was a musician. Um, incredible mm -hmm. disappointment all the time. I, I th I've, I've definitely noticed that I feel disappointment very deeply. Mm -hmm. And it's not disappointment with other people. It's in myself. Disappointment yeah. with myself. Yeah, I think that's a musician trait, <laughs> you know, because yeah. we're always Easy. striving to be great. Yep. Disappointment is probably my reigning, you know, feel bad. My my reigning feeling when I feel bad. Yeah, me too. And it's always self. It's always within myself. It's not about somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true, though, of everybody. I don't think, you know, whenever we're mad at somebody, we're not really mad at them. We're mad at ourselves. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really have anything to do with anybody else. And so, yeah, I mean... That that's the this is a conversation about knowing you have to, uh, you know, if, if there's one favor you could do yourself. And I think Tracy, you know, she's like, I, I think Tracy would probably scream this from the rooftops, like do what you know. Oh, I would totally you know, make decisions from what you know. I think your career actually would have been very different if you had done it from what you if you had acted from what you knew. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. You know, I would have. Yeah, I think it would be a totally different career, actually. I do, too. And it would I do be too. interesting and to see what that was. It's hard to feel regret about it sometimes. Not to feel regret. That's what I mean. Yeah, I get that. You know? I get that. Totally. Well, and especially, um, you know, when we're like right now, you're doing this sort of reinvention, evolving your career thing that, mm -hmm. you know, like with your playing, your playing career right now. And yes. 
And so you, I'm sure there's some element of starting over. Like you feel like you're starting over. Yeah. And you know, that happens a lot. I notice to people in their forties, there seems to be the ending of something and then the start, you know, a start over period. I don't know what it is, but I'm experiencing it right now, actually sort of a starting over in my own career and in my business career and going in a totally different direction. And it is very humbling. Mm -hmm. Very humbling. Yeah. No, it's very, like you said, it's, I think it's very common in the forties, mm -hmm. age forties around the forties. Yeah. yeah. And it's really funny because this is when everyone's trying to look all put together. <laughs> yep. You notice that? Yeah. You want to look that? like everything's perfect. Yeah. You want to look like everything is fine and then you got your shit together and you know, you got your money handled and you got your living <laughs> situation handled and you know, you got your relationships handled and the truth is everybody's a mess. Yeah. That's the truth. Everybody's a mess. And everybody is in some stage of starting over or evolution or whatever. Everybody is, you know, and you have to just, you have to sit back for a minute and have some compassion for that. And that also means you have to have compassion for yourself. Totally. Wherever you are, you really do. And, and I think that's probably the message for this week uh, for us is this was a tough week. Mm -hmm. And we have to sit back and have a little bit of compassion here for all the humanity that <laughs> showed up this week. So much. At the beginning of the week, I was I was just resisting like heck all the stuff that I'd promised to do on the 30 day challenge. I just did not yep. want to do it at all. Yep. Yep. And, and I think you were too. Like you got to muscle it out. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then and then the you know the stuff hit the fan with the school and then and then that that just that snowballed everything. And I still yeah, I still took over the week. Yeah, it did. And I and I still had to focus on the stuff I said I would do for the 30 day challenge. Uh, yeah, for the 30 day challenge, social media stuff. Yep. Um, Which actually you did really well. Thank you. I think toward a midweek was when I took a turn. Like I said, I'm going to own this now. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. Instead of like, I have to do this because I said I would like, and mm -hmm. I knew like, in, in fact, I think what there was a thought somewhere in there that, that said, my intention for this 30 day challenge is not to do all this social media stuff and then get to the end of it. So I um, have a new habit or that I, or maybe that I can ease up on it after 30 days. My intention mm -hmm. was that I would create a new frame of mind for where I'm coming from with social media for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I yeah. wanted. And I'm all, I'm already feeling it shift. Good. So yeah, I, I can it, ask you if you're feeling that now. Yeah, I'm feeling a shift. I'm seeing how it can work in my life. Cause my, my first case, my worst case scenario is what I do sometimes. And I'm going, oh, it's going to take over my life. I have to be on social every day. All yeah. Day. You know, and a lot of people think that. So I, I mean, I can relate to that completely because yeah. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to as well who say that, you know, I, I can't be on social all the time. I have other things to do. Yeah. And you I know? was like, Oh, I don't want to tell everybody every single thing that's happening. And then I'm like, wait, I don't have to tell them every single thing that's happening. I can just pick one thing and then pick another thing later. And then like, they don't have to see like every single thing that happened in my day. They just have to see some of the stuff that happened in my day. Yeah. It's interesting for you. And, and also, you know, it gives people a, a, you know, view into your world, you know, what your world looks like. And that's what is so cool about social. It, totally. And you know, the stories, like, it's funny because I love looking at almost everybody's stories. Like almost everybody's, it almost doesn't even matter who it is. Like if they're doing stories pretty well, um, which means it's just a variety of, of things. That's really all it takes. Um, yeah. it's fun to see where someone else is. Like, yes, I just looked at Steve Hackman's and there were only two there and he was playing Frisbee on the beach and it was, it was gorgeous. I'm like, oh, yeah. that's pretty. I liked seeing that. Yeah. And then on to the next one, like, um, some views of a city skyline or something. And I'm like, oh, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I looked at my own. And, um, when they're all, all put together in like, you know, a couple second things all in a row, it's kind of funny to see it, you mm -hmm. know? So totally, totally. I agree. So yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think you did a great job this week, despite the challenges that you ran into. I think. Thanks. You know, you. I think you came out with flying colors, and I think it's great that it's cha- you're changing your mind about it. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling, and I'm I'm glad that I still have two more weeks left of this challenge, a little over two weeks. I know, right? Yeah. I know. Yeah. I feel I feel that way too because I'm like, yeah, I'm already done with this. I'm like this. Yeah. It's so fun. It's so funny how, you know, right around this time is when. It, it, you know, it, it starts to get, it just gets gritty. Yeah. It just, I don't know. There's something, there's some grit thing that happens right around this time, this day 12 deal. Yeah, um, we'll have to see. I mean, now we're going to be watching for it, I guess, um, next time we do a challenge. Yeah. But right, um, we're probably just going to be creating it by watching. For it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. We won't, we won't go there. But yeah, I mean, you know, because that, that's possible. We can certainly say. But I'll, But I'll be honest, I didn't notice the day until we started, you know, before we got on this chat, we said, you know, what day is this of the 30 day challenge, by the way, like, where are we? And, and of course we realized when we started it and, and I thought, my God, you know, this is pretty close to day 12 again. It's not, it wasn't a conscious thing. Maybe it's just something about when you put your mind to doing something, creating a new um, thing in your life, a new habit or behavior. Um, Maybe it just, that's like kind of a 10 to 12 day threshold or something. I don't know. We'd have to Google it and see if someone else discovered that too. But um, maybe that's a thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, totally. Or maybe we invented the thing. <laughs> yeah, maybe we did. <laughs> but, um, you know, and it would be cool too if anyone's doing any sort of challenge like we are, if you're doing a 30 day or a seven day or whatever you're doing, it'd be interesting to hear, you know, what you're doing and what, if you're finding the same thing we are. Yeah. If you're finding the same thing we are, because, you know, um, yeah, you know, this is the kind of, sorry to interrupt you. This is the kind of thing we're talking about in crushing classical cats in the classical cats group. I mean, yeah, yeah. You can join the classical because there's other people who are doing some challenges right now, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And we're, they're talking about it. And we, we had a long discussion inside the group this past week about, um, the stuff we talked about on the last fireside chat about social media. So if you're not a member of the group yet, join. Um, just, you know, I'll let you in as soon as I see it or Eileen will. And, um, mm-hmm. you can see what's going on in those threads. The common threads are really great. People are participating yeah. and asking questions. And, um, I'm, I'm committed to starting new conversations there every couple of days. So. Yeah. It's been, it's actually kind of cool to see what's happened in the group lately. Yeah. It's fun. Totally. So, yeah. All right. Well, that was great, Eileen. That was, yeah. That was, it was that good. I mean, it was good it to talk it out. We, yeah. we had to talk it out anyway. We hadn't really talked this out. Um, yeah. You know, we hadn't even processed ourselves what kind of went on this week. Exactly. So I hear Bernie. Hey, Bernie. Yeah, he's going nuts. So he's going nuts. So David has a, a student in a second. So. Oh, okay. He's well. You know, he's an old man. That's he, is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he's like, what's going on? He's such an old man. You can see more of the old man stories on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, if you want to see Bernie the old man. Just kind of yeah, he's he's got story. he's developed this mustache. I think it's from pushing doors open. He's worn away like the white hair on his nose right under his nose, so now he looks like he has like a Hitler mustache. Oh, he's probably got like a little callus there now from opening doors. Could be because we got the screen and porch, and he, he's learned how to push it open the door when he comes in. Yeah, he's so no funny. dummy. This one. Yeah. No, he's not. He's a smart one. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. funny all right well thanks eileen we'll see you next week for another fireside chat sounds good okay bye. bye thank you for listening today hey listen i have a huge favor to ask you and it will only take a few seconds if you like this show one way that you can let us know is by writing a review on itunes and subscribing to the podcast Writing a review will help other people find the podcast and help us immensely. It will only take a few minutes. Just head over to iTunes and search for Crushing Classical. There you can write a review and click subscribe. Thanks again.